Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. We buy our tiny QRP radios and then we set about accessorizing them. My FX4CR, I guess technically isn't QRP unless I dial that knob back. It's up to 20 watts, but it is certainly tiny. Let me show you three essential accessories I wouldn't leave home without. Let's grab our small backpack. After all, it's a tiny radio. Of course, we're going to want our G Gable tripod for our antenna systems. And what if we want to go directly into the ground? Let's take our BD7 Maple ground spike. Let's take our 7350T telescoping antenna base, a post for that tripod mount. And of course, we're going to need our telescoping antenna whip. Let's get that in the bag. We'll talk about this battery in a minute, and then let's just find a place somewhere to put our cords, our microphone, and any coax that we need to take with us. And last but not least, let's go ahead and think about grabbing that radio and throwing that into the back. Whoops, wait a second. Let's put some protection on this thing first. If you're like me, you like to protect your gear and keep it looking new. No need for this thing to get all scratched up. It's a gorgeous piece of equipment. There are protective wraps out there for camera lenses, camera cases, and why not use it in our ham way of life? Just wrap this up using the self-attached Velcro on the wrap, and the next thing you know, you can take this and throw it right in with all the other gear and it's completely protected. One of the challenges with these tiny radios is the ability to see the screen based on the viewing angle. Lay them flat on their back, it's hard to see the screen. Put them on their bottom, it's hard to see the screen. We need a kickstand so that these are at the perfect angle, whether at the workbench, the picnic table at the local park doing POTA, or wherever we choose to use it. You don't need to use the kickstand, you can orient it differently, but sometimes that kickstand is perfect. Make sure you get it in the right place. You've got one shot at this. You don't want to put it on at the wrong location. Be aware, I've tried this with my true SDX, and I couldn't find an adhesive that would hold to that, so your mileage might vary. But this kickstand has two different levers, so it can be at two different locations. It lays flat just like this on my work surface, or I flip up that kickstand and it's at the perfect viewing angle. We're intrigued by how small our radios are for those of us who like tiny form factor, and then we have to think about how do I power this? How big of a battery am I going to take with me? I can find a number of different cable accessories to go various ways, but what about power? Everywhere I go, I have my iPhone with me and I usually have a charging brick for my iPhone. Surely I can't use the, what, what, no, no, what? You can do that? Seriously? Huh, who knew? KD4 BMG testing, testing, no response required. A few things before we go any further on this subject of batteries and using bricks with your QRP radios. I am not an expert. I've not yet graduated from the Smoky Nape School of Battery Learning. There are other smart people out there that know a lot more about batteries than I do. Be sure to gather from them the information that you would need for an informed decision. I'm only sharing with you what I know at this point in time. I'm intrigued by the subject and I'm intrigued by it because I went small form factor with this radio. This radio sits on top of this battery pack and this battery pack and the packs disappear because they're the same size they're the same footprint and now i have versatility i can charge my cell phone i can charge other small electronic equipment do understand there are differences this is a lifepo battery right? It's LifePo. It's made to operate at 13.8 volts. If I'm not mistaken, these are probably lithium ion polymer batteries, and they're not necessarily made to operate at 13.8 volts. They put out 12 volts. The same with this talent cell. This talent cell is one of the big beasts that they do offer. They make a smaller version that I'm going to be testing out in the future as well. But the appeal is that now I have a power brick, and in the case of these two, that is the very same footprint as my FX4CR, it's more small gear. Of course, my BioNO battery will work with this. I can cable it up, but then I need some additional accessories to take this and put it down to the proper charging values that I need for my iPhone. So here's some versatility. I would say this is probably a battery that's better suited for the voltage and the wattage and the amperage that I need precisely for my FX4CR, but my FX4CR was made with enough flexibility to operate with these. 
So when I'm really trying to go small form factor, these are options. By the way, I am an Anchor affiliate, and even though I haven't found the perfect pairing of the Anchor to the FX4CR, I do have a link to my affiliate uh, program in my description below. If you need any Anchor products, that would be a huge help to me. For Anchor and iPhone, easily, the iPhone knows what it needs to charge at, and so the two of them talk together. And right now, this FX4CR does not tell the Anchor battery pack what it needs. So this has more power and is trying to send more voltage into this than it should be operating on and therefore not playing that game. This one is right at 12 volts. That's all it puts out, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. I don't remember what this was, but it was way over 12 volts. And a lot of times the gear that these are powering, they talk together with the gear and between the battery pack and the PCB in it and the intelligence in the gear, they decide what power should be transferring back and forth. That intelligence, as best I can tell, is not in the FX4CR. I don't know that it's in any other QRP rig that we have out there. I would say it's unlikely that it's in the true USDX. I'm not certain of that. But always understand what power you're taking from your batteries and taking into your rigs so that you're not creating any damage to your rig. Now, another question someone's going to ask, and here's something else I need to say as a warning to you. Again, I'm going to investigate this more. You don't see a fuse here, do you? If I plug this in, I'm going to fuse it. If I plug this into my car and operate from a power port in my car, it's going to be fused. Why is that? Why am I taking this and allow it to run my USDX or my FX4CR without a fuse in between? Well, there's intelligence built into the PCBs of this. You did see me put my $1,300 iPhone into this, right? So we've already made the assumption, we have the belief that there's intelligence in these power bricks, that if there's a short there's protection here to take care of them. Now, don't trust your gear to my thought. That is what I believe is occurring. Do some investigation yourself. And I would love for the people that really know the answer to that question to go ahead and state it in the comments below. If you have an opinion about that, well, I'm not trusting my gear to that. That's an opinion. I'm looking for someone who actually has the knowledge, the factual information on that. Please tell us all, and I will pin your comment to the top. There is so much ham and so little time. People are describing ham radio as a hobby of hobbies, and that is so true. There are so many things I'm interested in. I just can't get to them all. But this one has intrigued me because I want to stay small form factor with my FX4CR. So I'm going to continue to investigate these different battery options and share them with you over time. I hope you found this useful, friend. And before you leave, let me remind you, this screen is gorgeous. I don't own own a video camera that can do it justice. Talk to you soon, 73.